Hey, what's up everybody? It's Ryan Cook here and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about filing your chains. Now, I have been putting this off because I'm not the best filer. I've only been filing for about eight or nine years. I'm not a faller. I've just literally kind of learned from some great people. Ken Braun told me some really great tips one day. Kevin Lewis, who's been featured in some of my videos, he's given me some great insight into filing. But what I wanna show you is, for me, how to file, how I file my carving saws. So this is for quarter pitch chain on a uh, 5 30 second file and I think I do it at like 30 degrees. I kind of go with this. I mean, this file right here is great. This handle works good. It's, it actually has the guides here. So when you're doing a filing, one thing you need to think about is being even and trying to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, that's not the case every single time because if you hit a nail or if you hit a screw or if you rock it, one or two of the teeth are gonna be out and then you have to kind of work a little harder at that. So for myself, when I'm doing this, I like to think about looking for the fluff come up. Now, I'm gonna show you guys right now. We're gonna walk right here and, uh, I'm, and I've got the saw ready to go. I'm using it and that's important to me is how I line up my file. So right away, you got to think safety first, put on some gloves, put on your safety glasses, because I cannot tell you how many times I have gotten little metal shards of metal in your eye from filing and it's really tricky to get out and also can lodge itself in metal will dig itself in and get your eyes right messed up. Now, laying out this. So here we go. I'm going to just adjust this back a bit so you can see what I'm talking about. And what I like to do is I'll, I'll go like this at first, right? So this is the guide that I use. You can get file guides. I kind of wing it now. I try and do it at 30. So then I got it here and then I keep a little bit of pressure here as I'm pulling. And you don't want to dig down, you don't want to dig up. Some guys have said they do it down, some guys have said they do it up. I like to go straight across, trying to keep this file doing the same thing the whole time. Now, my GoPro's a little too close. I go along and I try to line up my gauge and I just go one, two, three, four. With even strength now when you're first doing a brand new chain it's a little harder because it's got that pre-factory set stuff now i go across like this oh, and try to get this is a brand new chain so i go like that i get it to where i start to see that this is consistent it's lining up here at the angle you want it to be and I start to see it fluff over a little bit here. Now I'm not digging down because if you dig too far down, it's not gonna cut. You wanna see your file kind of grazing over top of it. And once you're done, you know, on bigger chains, you can file this part out and that will actually help it. But you don't want it to be down. You kinda wanna just like run it along it so it's, so it kind of, you know, guides it along. Your, your idea is to take as much wood from here to here. If you have your rakers too low, then you're going to be taking too much wood. It's going to make the saw work, but I like my rakers low. That's my choice. Um, and uh, so yeah, I'll go like this. Two, three, four. I do one side at a time and then I go. I like to try to keep the same pressure the whole time. And like I said, you know, it's you're you're going by feel, but your thing is you want it to be consistent. Being consistent in your strength, in your stroke, 
and finish is going to make you file this thing much better. If you start veering where you go like wow, it's gonna make it cut up wrong. And, and then when you switch sides, that also has to be exact same. So you wanna switch sides and line it up because you know when you're doing your left hand, it's a little bit different. You know, I must have hit a nail here. You can see right there, I hit something. So this one's gonna take a little more work. Now, you guys can see it. I keep checking my angle, and now it's starting to emerge. Now I'm keeping it very consistent. I'm trying to roll that out. And then that's kind of flush and ready to go. And there we go. Now, what I've already done is what, like a cardinal rule that I never do. I don't go one tooth, then the other, then the other. I do each side at a time. And you know, like you can take the oil from your, your chain here and mark it in the tooth. And then when you're around, it'll be there on the way back. Or you can use a felt pen or something like that. But that's a good trick. That's what I do. And, and the first couple strokes through on a new chain, it's a little harder, you know? And one thing you wanna do too, mine are really loose, as you can tell. I'm used to filing. But if you're new to filing, maybe you wanna unloosen this, tighten it up so it's, you know, it moves a little bit, but you also doesn't have it rolling like you know you don't want your uh your chain to roll as you sharpen ouch and you should wear gloves as you just see i almost got cut there i'm uh i'm good at preaching but not following my own rules so i try to keep everything level checking from time to time you see how i strayed there i check from time to time about getting that done and then i roll it at the end to try and get that little chunk out and doesn't dig itself down deep. So this is actually a great chain to to uh, show you guys how to do it because this chain is actually pretty fucked up. So I'm gonna do a lot more than normal, but ideally you want the, the teeth to be the same distance because if say this one's dropped way far down and this one's longer, which happens if you do inconsistent strengths, your left hand is weaker a lot of the time, so you you can overpower or underpower on both sides, and that can cause the chain to become uneven. So really, you wanna keep it balanced. A lot of guys will go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, and I think that's a great rule of thumb to to first do when you're you're first starting out the file. Now you see what I just did there? That's, I'm, I'm still trying to balance this out because there's this part right here where you can really dig down, but you also wanna take this out. Now, getting onto rakers, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, I'm just pulling fluff, I'm pulling sawdust. Uh, you gotta really maintain your rakers. I think that's important. I mean, right away when I get a brand new chain, the first thing I do is I drop the rakers. Now that being said, you need to be very consistent with that also. Because if you're if you're doing one way more times than the other, it can be like your saw will then go you'll cut and it'll be like it'll be jumpy because it'll cut smooth and then say you do five strokes on one and two on the other and then there's this elevation i mean each stroke is a big deal so this elevation actually can kind of mess up your your cuts and it becomes inconsistent and chattery and you really you really don't want that you know you want to make sure you have a a good well-balanced stroke and the first couple times on a new chain, takes it takes a little more muscle and you gotta kinda work your way through it. And I always struggle on it too, so, you know, 
don't overthink it. Just kind of get it to where you're doing it smooth and then try to keep it consistent to like the same amount of strokes. Now, I'm better at practicing what I preach. Or I wish I was better at practicing what I preach. But there, now I'm to the end. Now I go right to the same side, I line it up. And I'm gonna switch it over here. Okay, so now did this side. Now we're switching it up. So here's a, uh, we'll just do this. I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna go it a little crazy just so I know that this one is the one. So this tooth is totally screwed up. I hope you can see this on the camera. I'm gonna have to file the heck out of this thing. And you can see how it's just jumping. And it takes a few strokes even to get it to kind of come, but you want to stay high. Like you're not trying to push down. You're kind of running it along the side because you got to reshape the whole tooth. So whatever I hit here, it was not good. I think I remember this actually. This was doing the elk. So yeah, so you see now this tooth is way shorter than this tooth. It's gonna definitely change the, uh, it's, this, this chain's gonna pull to the right now, I think, or the left or whatever, but you know, before redoing it, oh, it's way tons of work. So line it up here. I line the guide up and then I go. Now one thing I think that's kind of cool, if you've got two file handles, I actually prefer to use one for this way and one for that way. Um, right for, for all intents and purposes right now, just getting this done, because I actually need to use this saw and make a video. Um, I'm just gonna, and this is a brand new file. So I'm able to keep the, uh, or use both and have a, a sharp file. Because for some reason, when you change directions, the metal, it just makes one side sharp and better and the other side feels like you're just grazing it across it. Now, now making files last, that's totally up to you. I actually buy tons of files because I don't know if this is the truth or not, but I think like once I use a file once or twice, it just doesn't work. So I buy and buy the boxes, many, many boxes. And you know, I have like 10 boxes and that'll last me for the year because the second I feel like I'm wasting my time and I'm just like grazing across it and this file isn't like sharpening and like doing that, like holding you back from it, then it's time to change it. And, uh, and one thing to think about is the types of files. Now I get echo ones cause uh, I think they work great. They're cheaper. Um, but Oregon, Oregon makes the best files, hands down. Uh, Husky makes a pretty good file and, and Echo's uh, files are fantastic too, you know? But when it really boils down to it, you pay for what you get. So if you go and order some of those cheapo knockoffs you can find on Amazon or like, you know, websites that will sell you files for cheap, you know, you get what you pay for. So you might get a few good strokes and then, oh, this chain is messed up. You might get a few good strokes and then it's just shit the bed on you. I like to be over top of my chain so I can look straight down at it. You know, some guys like to have it beside me. I used to have it on my vice and I'd watch it from the front. Then I really started to kind of pay attention to what I was doing. And the reason I'm going like multiple different ways or mo more strokes than on some than others because this chain's so messed up. But also, I like to kind of see over top, looking straight down. So I keep going until I see it kind of fluff up right at the tip here. And it's almost there, and there it is. And I'm just going with my feel and my gut. And, uh, and then I will take like a, 
a flat file and do like two or three strokes to get it to be where I would be happy with it. Now, as you guys have seen in my videos, nowadays I don't even use a flat file. I use a Makita finger sander, chain 36 grit belt, and I just take one tap. It's like, pap, 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 pap. And I try to do it as consistent as I can. And I haven't mastered that, so I don't recommend it. A flat file will do you better. And if you get a brand new flat file, you do one, two, three strokes. That's gonna make a big difference for you. So here we go. Start this thing up. That's a pretty good cut. So in closing, to recap as much information as I can in one filing video, it takes a lifetime to learn. I am not the best. Haters, if you're gonna leave shitty comments, go leave them somewhere else because I am just trying to help you guys. And I know I'm not the best, car uh, you know, carver, but I know I'm not the best filer and I'm, and I'm, but I'm okay. And I've been asked by a lot of you to do a video, so I hope it can help. Now, even strokes across and even strokes across. Keep your rakers dropped as much as you can. Don't go crazy. You watch Saw Dog, Skip Armstrong. He files his rakers all the way down. The chain flies off. It's super dangerous. So if you're gonna use a flat file, one, two strokes, three strokes a few times, that's great. Uh, remember when with carving bars, you want to run your chain at least loose. You want to see the teeth kind of at the bottom. I run mine extremely loose, but I know how to use it. Um, <clears throat> but the reason you do that is because if you have your chain too tight without a sprocket, it will pop the tip on any carving bar. Now, uh, what else was I just thinking? Shit, I can't remember. But it's all good. So... Thanks for watching. My name's Ryan Cook. If this video helped you, give it a like, give it a subscribe to my page where I will be doing tons of stuff to help you guys. And that's what this page is all about. So if you have any comments or questions on things, let me know. Uh, organ files are fantastic. Echo files are great. Husky ones are good. Um, just don't buy that cheap shit that they got online. Um, you pay for what you get. And uh, that's it. Later. <laughs> All right, back to carving.